Okay, so let's uh, dig into this a bit more about how the, the size of technology has changed. What did a satellite from like 1960s look like? Yeah, in fact, this is uh, Australia's first satellite, Reyesat, in 1967. Now, it weighed 45 kilos. As he said, they still weren't that big that day because the rockets weren't that big. But this thing did one thing. It kind of, as you just said, went bleep. Kind of just this thing that said, hey, it's there, I'm me, I'm here. It, it did, I think, about 70 orbits of the Earth. And that was about it. Okay. It it's was definitely ambitious. chest beating. We can put something in space. Don't ask any more questions. Pretty much. It, look, big achievement, 1967, made Australia the third country to build and launch a satellite from its country. Um, but if you think about what we do today, not that practical. Now, FedSat. FedSat was an anniversary satellite for the anniversary of the Federation of Australia. Originally designed, I think, for 2000, but it didn't go up to 2002. Different story. Now, it weighed slightly more. It weighed about 58 kilos. Now, just to also put this in size, this is, you know, this is over a meter tall. You can see a person in the background. These are, these are pretty tall. Mm -hmm. This is about the size of a big box. I could carry this. It was really heavy to move. 58 so kilos. We, we had a couple of people to move it. Yeah, but it's... It's doable, but it's a big box. But it also had six different experiments. So this was slightly heavier, smaller, and can do six experiments, some which were measuring the atmosphere, some were testing communications, some were beeping. And this stayed in orbit. In fact, it's still in orbit. And the only reason it can't be talked to now is because essentially the battery died. But this was, if you think about it, in you know, 40 years, even though the size is smaller and the weight's there, the electronics jump in those years meant that you can do a lot more for about the same amount of weight. But nowadays, we're really into these nanosats or cubesats. In fact, cubesats are something we call them because you have this modular cube that is 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters that weighs one kilogram. And it's kind of like space Lego. You can configure it different sizes. And this is what we call a 2U unit, two sections of 10 centimeters. This weighs four kilograms. So we've gone from... 40 to 50 kilograms to 4 kilograms. And this had two different experiments going on at the same time. So you know, you're talking about something that's the size of a loaf of bread doing more than that first 45 kilogram satellite. OK. And actually something that was more than just beeping. This is, can be done for any different science experiment. In fact, Australia does a lot of these. Um, from monitoring the upper layers of the atmosphere to communications to People are now even designing small space telescopes to fit into these. Because you don't need to look at a huge area if you want to look at just a few bright things. They're cheap, they're lightweight, and they can work. But people aren't stopping there. We now have our femtosats. And now, instead of being the size of a loaf of bread, they're uh, you know, almost the size it's of a room. Yeah, hand. Exactly. Yes. And these are weighing hundreds of grams. So here, you can put on lots of these satellites on one rocket launch. And again, they can do one or two experiments. And so you're not going to be able to build something that is going to be a new big space telescope. And we'll explore this later in this course. But if you want to build it for an experiment, if you want to test a new piece of equipment, if you just want to measure one specific thing, instead of building something that's 45 kilograms, now you can build something that's 450 grams. And that costs is a dramatic difference of putting it up in space. And again, we're looking at smartphone technology yeah. that uh, these uh, has the power of a supercomputer and array. I mean, if you tried to build something in 1970 that could do all the things this did, it would be the size of this room. I mean, in, the, in fact, even if you just made that space suitable and stuck it up in space, that would be better than a lot of those things in the 50s. As you said, the power's there and a bit easier. You know, just launch a thousand iPhones up there and see what you get if they work. It's yes. almost more economical to do that than what we did in the 50s and 60s.